Pamela Rose Aldridge McCall Born in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Pamela Rose Aldridge McCall was described by her mother as free-spirited and transient as she spent her years hitchhiking throughout Tennessee and Virginia, where she resided in the community of Topping. In early 1991, the 33-year-old hitchhiker went missing near Spring Hill, Tennessee, and, according to witnesses, was last seen traveling with a semi-truck driver. In March of the same year, Pamela's body was discovered near the off-ramp of a road in Spring Hill. In another tragic turn, it was discovered that Pamela had been 24 weeks pregnant at the time of her death, and her unborn child had not survived. Her autopsy report also revealed that she had died of strangulation, with additional evidence indicating that she had been raped by her assailant. DNA from the perpetrator was recovered, but due to the nascency of DNA technology and the lack of other forms of hard evidence, her case soon went cold and was closed. It remained closed until April of 2019, when Spring Hill Police contacted the 22nd Judicial District Attorney's Office in Tennessee, requesting assistance in reopening the investigation into Pamela's murder. The request came as a result of an initiative by the DA's office, starting in 2014, to investigate unsolved homicide cases in the district. District Attorney Investigator Tommy Goetz reopened the case and submitted the DNA evidence acquired in the 1991 murder to a Tennessee Bureau of Investigation lab, where a DNA profile was compiled. When submitted to the FBI's National Combined DNA Index System, CODIS, the DNA matched DNA evidence recovered in two other unsolved homicide cases in Wyoming, both from 1992. The DA's office discovered that these cases were likely also linked to this unidentified truck driver that Pamela was last seen with. With the assistance of the Wyoming detectives and a host of federal agents, Tennessee investigators narrowed their search to Clark Perry Baldwin, a 59-year-old former truck driver living in Waterloo, Iowa. Baldwin's DNA matched the DNA evidence recovered from all three crime scenes, and Baldwin was arrested in May of 2020, charged with two counts of first-degree murder, one for Pamela and one for her unborn child. He is currently pending extradition to Tennessee, where he will face trial. He is also expected to be charged with two additional counts of murder for his involvement in the Wyoming cases. Baldwin's indictment is not only a victory for prosecutors and Pamela's family, but also yet another victory for the Tennessee DA's office initiative to reopen cold cases in the Spring Hill area. Since 2014, five unresolved homicide cases have been solved, with three individuals convicted on murder charges and two pending judgment. Margaret Peggy Beck Peggy Beck was only 16 years old when she was sexually assaulted and strangled to death at a Girl Scout camp in 1963. A Girl Scout since she was nine, Peggy was attending a summer Girl Scout camp in Jefferson County, Colorado. She was excited to be a camp counselor for the first time, but tragedy struck on August 18, 1963, when a fellow camper found her body in her tent after she failed to show up for breakfast that morning. Her tentmate had been in the infirmary the night of the murder, leaving Peggy alone in her tent. Sometime during the period between Peggy's last appearance before turning in for the night and breakfast the next morning, the brutal rape and strangulation took place. Investigators scoured the scene and searched fervently for any leads, but with no witnesses and little evidence, the case quickly went cold. Over the following years, the case remained open, with investigators still searching for possible suspects. Little changed over the next 44 years after the incident. In 2007, detectives at the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office created a John Doe DNA profile from evidence collected at the crime scene and entered it into the FBI's CODIS database, the same one used to help identify the killer in the Pamela McCall case. While this initial effort to use DNA to identify a suspect failed to turn up any new leads, it set the stage for investigators to create a more comprehensive DNA profile 12 years later in 2019. With this new profile, investigators enlisted the help of a private DNA testing company, United Data Collect, to test the new profile against UDC's database. This process, genetic genealogy, involved DNA being matched to public genetic genealogy databases to find relatives of a potential suspect. In a stroke of luck, the test found matches linked to family members of the individual to which the DNA belonged. After further inquiry, James Reynolds Taylor was identified as the primary suspect, with his DNA matching DNA evidence collected from the scene of the crime. 
Despite this breakthrough and an arrest warrant issued in April of 2020, Taylor remains at large, having fallen off public radar since his last known spotting in the Las Vegas, Nevada area in 1976. Taylor would now be 80 years old, if still alive. According to investigators, Taylor was living in Edgewater, Colorado, a municipality located in Jefferson County, during the time of the murder. He was married with at least one child and worked as a television repairman. Little else is known about his life, whereabouts, or motivations. Nevertheless, the identification of Taylor as the presumed killer makes this the oldest known case to have ever been solved through genetic genealogy. Detectives at the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office have encouraged anyone with knowledge of Taylor to contact their office so that justice can be achieved for Peggy's murder. Karen Spencer At approximately 10 p.m. on November 29, 1972, 7th grader Karen Spencer left her home in Fairhaven, Virginia, telling her family that she intended to borrow a book from a nearby classmate's house. Tragically, this would be the last time her family saw the 12-year-old alive. After going missing that night, the body was found three days later, buried under leaves in a patch of woods known to the residents of Fairhaven as Pfeiffer's Field. Karen had been brutally beaten, dying of repeated blunt force trauma, according to her autopsy. Detectives identified a few possible suspects after their preliminary investigation. Among the police department's persons of interest was 16-year-old James Jimmy Edwards. Edwards was believed to have been Karen's boyfriend at the time, though little else could be determined about the relationship between the two. Additionally, the case lacked a clear motivation for the brutal murder, and despite extensive investigation, police were unable to charge any of the suspects in Karen's death. Despite this, investigators did not give up hope and continued to search for new leads or evidence. The case was turned over to the Fairfax County Major Crimes Bureau Cold Case Squad and remained without any significant developments until the summer of 2018. In an unexpected breakthrough, two independent acquaintances of Jimmy Edwards, who died in 1997, came forward to police, informing detectives that Edwards had confessed to them in the early 90s that he was responsible for Karen's murder. With this new information, police redoubled their efforts to solve this case. Now, with the clear suspect identified, police worked with the public to gain as much evidence as possible to determine whether the individual accounts could be corroborated. Through additional exculpatory evidence that came to light during the second wind of the investigation, the other possible suspects in the case were ruled out. Finally, 18 months after the initial breakthrough, police announced that, as of April 2020, their investigation had yielded sufficient evidence to arrest and prosecute Edwards, had he still been alive. With this revelation, the case was officially closed, with Edwards being the presumed killer. While justice came too late for Edwards to do time for his vicious murder of Karen Spencer, this news hopefully can bring some closure to Karen's surviving family, and is a hard-fought victory for the Fairfax County Police Department. According to police statements released with the case closure, quote, the fact that the Fairfax County detectives never gave up, combined with our community's willingness to come forward with information, were critical in solving this case. Naomi Sanders A divorced apartment manager, 57-year-old Vallejo, California resident Naomi Sanders lived with only one companion, her poodle named Cindy. Naomi was cooking dinner on the night of February 27, 1973, her half-cooked steak remained on the stovetop when her body was discovered by the police later that night. She had been sexually assaulted and strangled to death by an unknown assailant before her meal could even be completed. In a last act of loving obedience, Cindy was watching dutifully over her owner's body when police arrived. Investigators were worried from the beginning that this case would be difficult to solve, owing to Naomi's job as an apartment manager, a role that led her to frequently invite in prospective individuals looking for an apartment. Without any clear leads, Naomi's case quickly hit a dead end, leaving investigators with no choice but to leave her case unsolved. Similarly to past cold cases solved through previously collected DNA evidence, police attempted to match their gathered unknown DNA profile against the FBI's CODIS database in 2014, but were met with no results. Reluctant to give up on the DNA evidence, police tried matching the profile against a California state database, but again they were met with disappointment. Finally, in 2018, investigators turned to genetic genealogy, much like in the process employed to solve the Peggy Beck case. With the help of a Virginia-based company known as Parabon Nano Labs, police finally identified two new leads in the case that had long been cold. 
One lead took California investigators to Louisiana, but this turned out to be a false positive. The second led investigators to Robert Dale Edwards, who had died in 1993 due to a drug overdose. Investigators were able to locate and solicit DNA from Edwards' son, however, and at last they found their match. The deceased Edwards had been a co-worker of Naomi's and had a long criminal history that ranged from theft to attempted murder. He would have been 22 years old at the time of the murder, but police were unable to ascertain a direct motive for the rape and murder of Naomi. Nevertheless, police finally had enough evidence to close the case nearly five decades later, in February of 2020. Like in the murder of Karen Spencer, Naomi's killer evaded justice in life, but thanks to genetic genealogy, Naomi's surviving family members can rest easy without wondering who was responsible for this heinous act. Tonya McKinley New Year's Eve of 1985 should have been a time of celebration for young mother Tonya McKinley, who was 23 years old with an 18-month-old son. The Pensacola, Florida resident had left a local bar around 1.30 a.m. after enjoying the New Year's festivities. Hours later, her body was discovered on the side of the road by a passing family. She had been raped and murdered before being discarded by an unknown assailant, according to her autopsy. Despite interviewing dozens of bar patrons who had last seen Tonya, police were unable to name any suspects in the murder. While new leads appeared over the years, police continued to hit dead end after dead end. In a particularly moving statement released by the Pensacola police regarding the case, detectives reflected on the tragedy of the situation. While the case remained unsolved, a baby boy grew up without a mother, parents buried their daughter without knowing justice, and a killer was walking around free. Thanks to the help of genetic genealogy, detectives finally found their opportunity to identify Tonya's killer. Using DNA databases, Pensacola police were able to construct a family tree of relatives with similar DNA to that of the DNA evidence collected at the scene of the crime. Through this, detectives located 57-year-old Daniel Wells, a relative to one of the matches found via the DNA database. Wells lived near Pensacola at the time of the murder and became the primary suspect for detectives. In March of 2020, detectives trailing Wells were able to collect a cigarette butt dropped out of the car window. The DNA from the cigarette matched the DNA from Tonya's murder, and after more than 35 years, police could finally make an arrest in the case. Wells now awaits trial for first-degree murder and first-degree sexual battery, and justice can finally be given to Tonya's family, including her son, now in his mid-30s. Nothing can make up for the loss, but at least now the investigation of Tonya's tragic death can act as another example of genetic genealogy, providing closure to victims and their families.